All right, we're going to talk a little bit today about estrus detection and estrus synchronization. And uh, either one of those and or both of them at, at one way or another is going to be necessary to, to have a good handle on if you're going to be participating in an AI program. Sometimes estrus synchronization is used in, with bulls in natural service to kind of group cows up and stuff, but by far the biggest use of these two uh, methods, either whether we're checking heat for natural heat or, or you doing some sort of synchronization protocol is to facilitate artificial insemination in uh, either heifers or cows. Um, so let's, in order to understand how these drugs work and the, the procedure for, for either detecting heat naturally or synchronizing it is, we need to know a little bit about the estrus cycle of the cow or the heat cycle. Uh, on average, the estrus cycle in a cow or heifer, a, a cycling cow or a cycling heifer, is going to be about 21 days long. That can range anywhere from maybe 18 to 24, you know, kind of a range, but we typically say it's about an average of 21 days. Uh, you know, if, if you're reading, you may just notice that the S, there's two different spellings for this. E-S-T-R-O-U-S refers to the cycle. E-S-T-R-U-S is basically synonymous with heat. We see a cow standing in standing heat or standing estrus, it's, it's the same thing. So the length of estrus, the length of time she'll stand to be serviced by a bull or be receptive or beginning to start an AI program would, would be about 8 to 12 hours. So uh, we typically, if we're checking, checking heat in cattle, we try to do that in the cool part of the morning or, and again, in the cool part of the evening. That's the most important time. Um, Cattle typically don't show a lot of standing heat if it's real hot out there in the middle of the day. So we typically say we need to check heat for a minimum of 30 minutes, morning and evening, okay? The other thing we need to kind of know is ovulation does not occur until after the cow goes out of heat. So ovulation occurs about 12 hours after the end of standing heat. So we have this thing in artificial insemination we call the AMPM rule. That is, if we catch a cow in heat in the morning, we're going to inseminate her that evening. That's because we want to try to time the occurrence of insemination with the timing of ovulation. Um, the other reason is uh, sperm cells have to stay in the reproductive tract for a, around eight hours to go through a process we call capacitation, where they have a little little cap on their head, if you want to think of it that way, called the acrosome, and it's got to go undergo some chemical changes to, to become fully fertile and able to fertilize an egg. So those are the two reasons we use AMPM. Um, that's typically the still the rule for beef cattle. Uh, some dairies may have a little different protocol, but that's typically what we use for beef cattle. And that is, again, to facilitate the timing of ovulation, which occurs after the end of standing heat, and again, allow that sperm some time in the reproductive tract to, to undergo the changes it needs to. Okay, the other thing we need to really kind of understand is the, the follicular cycles in a, in a cow um, and what, what forms after ovulation. So we see here in the bottom right, we have uh, an ovary that's uh, large in appearance, uh, but it's, it's pretty smooth, I, I mean, sorry. It's smooth in appearance, but if you look closely at that ovary, it's got some dark spots on it. Those are what we call primary and growing follicles, okay? Those are follicles that are just sort of sitting there waiting to be selected to be the one that ovulates every 21 days. If you look at the, at the ovary over here on the left, it has both a large follicle and what we would call a corpus luteum. It's going to be very important to understand those two structures. That large follicle will not ovulate right now because the corpus luteum will not allow her to complete the, the uh, follicular development. That, that follicle will get large like that and then it'll probably regress all on, all on its own. If that large structure there at the top were not present, likely is that follicle or another one in a different follicular wave might come along and replace it and, and grow to maturity and be the single follicle that, that ovulates and ovum at the uh, every 21 days in the estrus cycle, okay? All right, let's talk about the estrus cycle, okay? We, we referred to the corpus luteum, we referred to the follicle. So we just pick a point here in this graph. 
you can see, let's, let's start over here at day zero in my little cartoon here. The uh, little pink thing there is the ovary and the, the white thing is the large follicle, which is about ready to ovulate. You'll notice that estrogen, if we were to measure that in the cow at this time, would be at its peak. Estrogen is at its peak prior to ovulation because that's what causes the cow to express the behavioral signs of standing estrus. When estrogen is high, the cow comes in heat and stands to be bred, bred by the bull. Uh, estrogen is produced primarily by that follicle. It's got some other sources in the body, of course, but that, that follicle produces, the bigger that follicle gets, the more estrogen it produces. Okay, so she's, she's, she's in standing heat, but she has not ovulated yet. At this time, uh, parts of the brain, the, the hypothalamus and the pituitary, basically sense that high estrogen circulating throughout the body, and they release, uh, the hypothalamus releases a hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone. Uh, tropin means uh, one hormone acting to release another hormone. The gonadotropin comes from the hypothalamus. It goes directly underneath the hypothalamus to act on the pituitary to release two other hormones simultaneously. One is called FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone. The other one is called LH, or luteinizing hormone. That follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the very last sort of growth in that follicle, and then the LH, or luteinizing hormone, causes that follicle to rupture, as you can see in that little cartoon there. It's just basically like a blister bursting. The follicle is full of follicular fluid. The LH comes down from the uh, pituitary and the peripheral blood and acts at the level of the ovary and causes that event to occur. When that uh, little ovum or egg is ovulated, a structure, a thin membrane that surrounds the ovary called the infundibulum, basically acts sort of like a, I guess you'd call it a catcher's mitt, catches that egg or ovum and funnels it down into the oviduct. And that's actually where fertilization takes place, is in the, in the middle part of the oviduct. Okay, so in a naturally occurring estrous cycle, um, it's got two, two fates, I guess you'd say. If fertilization occurs, the uterus senses pregnancy through a fairly complex chemical process. A uh, bunch of other chemicals involved, interferon tau would be a, a big one. But basically the uterus senses that, uh, that it's pregnant at about, uh, Oh, the, the uh, fertilized zygote or, uh, you know, will stay in the oviduct from the time of fertilization at day one on out to about day seven, at which time it leaves the oviduct and migrates into the uterus. The conceptus will stay as an, as an embryo, kind of floating around freely in that uterus until about day, oh, early day, mid, mid part of day 20 to maybe 28, when the placenta starts to develop, okay? So somewhere towards the end of that, you know, 18 days or so, the uterus is able to detect that conceptus. If it detects a conceptus, the estrous cycle is pretty much put on hold, the corpus luteum remains on the ovary, and it keeps the cow from having another heat cycle until the calf is born and you know, she will have another breeding event the following year. If the cow does not conceive, the uterus detects the fact that it is not pregnant, and it then releases a hormone, or a, let, me, let me just say it, if, she, if she's pregnant, the, the progesterone is produced by the corpus luteum, okay? That's direct, represented here by this orange line. So in a natural cycle, that, uh, if she's not pregnant, that CL develops and starts really producing progesterone about uh, oh, two or three, four days after ovulation. It reaches its peak production somewhere around nine to 14 days. Along about day 15, if the uterus does not detect a pregnancy, it will produce another hormone called prostaglandin, which basically goes from the uterus over to the ovary and the peripheral blood and basically causes that corpus luteum to regress or go away. In the absence of a corpus luteum, the estrous cycle begins again in 21 days on average for a non-pregnant cow. And the estrous cycle will continue that way until the cow becomes pregnant. Um, so that would be represented here by the red line again, which is right where we started 
at the beginning at day zero. At about day 21, we also have, we now have a growing follicle and we have, again, high estrogen. So that would be the, what happens in a, in a non-pregnant cow. And again, the reason we kind of talk about corpus luteums and uh, FSH and LH and, and GNRH, the hormone that causes those things, and progesterone is because those are the hormones that we're going to use in an estrogen synchronization program. And so they basically mimic what naturally happens in the cow. Uh, I think I'll mention this later, but in case I forget, I, I would say there is some misconception out there that these estrus synchronization drugs cause cattle to come into heat. They don't. Uh, the cattle, cattle have to generally be having a naturally occurring estrus cycle in order to respond to these drugs. Basically, if, if the clock is running, we just use these drugs to reset the hands on the clock. But the clock has to be running. That said, uh, GNRH can recruit a small number of anestrous females and maybe talk some about that later. But, but the rule of thumb is cows have to be having natural ester cycles and that means that a mature cow that's had a calf needs to be at least 45 days postpartum in order for her reproductive tract to involute, we call it, and allow her to, to be able to conceive a pregnancy. In heifers, ester cycles occur when the heifer becomes pubertal and she reaches puberty and we've talked about that in some other videos about what it takes for a heifer to become pubertal. But those are the two, two things that occur there, okay?